Hi, I'm Brian Erlob with Intertech Global. Our topic today is the installation procedures for the YT model packaged water to air heat pump. It can be installed in the left or right hand upflow configuration. Let's get started. Before beginning the installation, compare the electrical data on the unit name plate with the packing slip and ordering information to verify the correct unit has ordered and shipped. You want to carefully inspect the unit before beginning installation. Remove and discard the air coil protective shipping cover. Remove the center insert panel or the belly band on the front of the unit by gently inserting a flat blade in the gap on the side and gently prying open. For installation you'll need to remove the top outer panels front and back and bottom panel under the coil. Units are shipped with the control box and the unit air handler in the upper section of the unit. You'll need access on all four sides of the unit before installation. Verify that all refrigerant tubing is free of dents and kinks. Refrigerant tubing should not be touching other unit components. Before unit startup, read all manuals and become familiar with the unit components and operation. Thoroughly check the unit before operating. Inspect all electrical connections and wires. Connections must be clean and tight at the terminals, and wires should not touch any sharp edges or copper pipe. Special care should be taken in planning the location of the geothermal unit. The desired installation location should include adequate service clearance around the unit. Most installations are predetermined to be left or right hand return. If you have a choice, look at the unit carefully, consider the access before determining left or right return. The source in and out connections, along with the hot water generator fittings, are on the bottom of the air coil side of the unit. Under the water connections is the desuperheater pump and refrigerant ports. The condensate drain is in the center of the pan and is field selectable to exit on the coil side post in front or back. The drain options are labeled on the post. The condensate connections are easier to fasten if done prior to the fitting of the return air drop. All vertical units shall be placed on a form plastic air pad or a high density closed cell polystyrene pad slightly larger than the base of the unit. All units should be located in an indoor area where the ambient temperature will remain above 55 degrees and should be located in a way that piping and ductwork or other permanently installed fixtures do not have to be removed for servicing and filter replacement. It is important to allow adequate service access. A general rule of thumb is at least two feet in the front and two feet on at least one side. An optimum installation would allow at least two feet on all sides. Once you have determined whether the unit will be left or right return, We'll install the control box. Mounting the control box requires removal of the top access cover port filler plate in front or back, several panels, and the M bracket under the blower housing. Make sure to keep the four screws for future use. Remove the control box shipping bracket from the unit and the control box. This requires the removal of four screws. Remove the bracket from the unit. It can be recycled. Remove the blower wheel shaft stabilizer bracket on the shaft side of the motor. The M-shaped blower stabilizer bracket under the blower housing should now be removed. With all of the upper panels and the M bracket removed, it will be easier to pass the control box with the attached wiring harness under and around the blower housing and upward through the selected top access port. Make sure you have removed the shipping bracket on the control box before relocating the control box. Pass the control box through the front opening for left side return or back opening for right side return and set the control box on top of the unit. Place the overhanging alignment lip against the front of the unit. Be careful not to scratch or mar the front cover surface of the box. Remove the control box cover from the box by removing the two screws, one on each side. Keep these screws as they will be used when the control box cover is placed back on the control box. Do not secure the box to the unit at this time. There are several packages of components shipped with the unit. One package has a small filler plate, screws, and plastic tie straps. Slide the small filler plate into the slot at the bottom rear of the control box. This plate will cover and insulate the remainder of the access port. Now it is time to attach the control box to the top of the unit. First align the screw holes in the control box to the top cover. Insert, start, and tighten three screws, left, right, and center for the control box. Now go to the small filler plate on the rear of the control box, fastening the four screws to tighten the filler plate to the top cover. After completing the wiring of the unit, remember to assemble the control box cover back onto the control box. 
Confirm that the position of the unit wiring in the air handler section is well placed and does not come into contact with the blower wheel, motor, or any sharp edges. Use plastic tie straps to secure the wiring as needed. Reassemble all upper doors that were removed from the unit. This will complete the installation of the control box assembly to the unit. The flexible tube condensate drain allows field selectable installation. The cabinet through hole fitting is attached to the discharge tube at the factory. To install the drain tube, remove front and water side access panels. Remove the selected cabinet drain port round one inch plastic cover. Locate and unscrew the MPT slip fitting from the tube. Route and align tube and female fitting with selected cabinet drain port opening. Reinstall the MPT slip fitting and hand tighten. Complete the drain installation by connecting an easy trap to the equipment condensate drain connection. The condensate line must be trapped a minimum of one inch as shown in the diagram. The condensate line should be pitched away from the unit a minimum of one quarter inch per foot. The condensate line from the unit drain connection to the P-trap should be sloped downward. Always install the air vent after the trap, as discussed in Section 5, Unit Piping Installation. Install the return duct flanges provided in the kit package shipping inside the unit. Per the instructions, all supply return plenums should be isolated from the unit by a flexible connector or equivalent to prevent transfer of vibration noise to the ductwork. The flex connector should be designed so as to not restrict the airflow. Turning vanes should be used on any transition with airflow over 500 CFM. If the unit is installed in an unconditioned space, the metal ductwork should be insulated to prevent heat loss gain and to absorb air noise. If the unit is being installed with existing ductwork, the ductwork should be designed to handle the air volume required by the unit being installed. Water heating is standard on all residential units. Units may be ordered without. It uses excess heat during both heating and cooling cycles to provide hot water for domestic needs. A double wall desuperheater coil exchanger is located between the compressor and the reversing valve. It extracts superheated vapor to heat domestic water while satisfying its heating and cooling needs. The water circulation pump comes pre-mounted in all residential units, but must be electrically connected to the master contactor. Leaving it unconnected ensures that the pump is not run without a water supply. All copper tubes and fittings for the desuperheater circuit should be half inch nominal size minimum with a maximum of 50 foot distance one direction. Piping should be insulated with 3 8 inch wall closed cell insulation. PEX tubing is not allowed for use in the desuperheater circuit. Some other important points. Don't assume you have good water quality. Water quality should be tested and compared to the installation manual water quality guidelines. In areas where minimum entering loop temperatures drop below 40 degrees or where piping is routed through areas subject to freezing, antifreeze is required. Loop debris is particularly tough on pumps. We strongly recommend using filters in the flush tank while loop is being purged. Intertech Global's geothermal heat pump controls provide a modular approach for controlling the heat pump. It consists of one, two, or three printed circuit boards depending on the features of a particular unit. This approach simplifies installation and troubleshooting and eliminates features that are not applicable for some units. A microprocessor based printed circuit board controls the inputs to the unit as well as outputs for status mode, faults, and diagnostics. A status LED and LEDs for each fault are provided for diagnostics. Water to air models may offer an ECM control board option providing field selectable airflow and dehumidification modes, plus an LED to indicate CFM. 100 CFM per flash. The low voltage terminal strip is covered by a UL required low voltage cover. Remove the cover to access the thermostat connections and reinstall. For more information, please refer to the installation manual. And thank you for watching our YT unit installation video. Mm -hmm.